What's good, Philly? How y'all doing? All right, so look, I'm different, man, I'm different, right? So I need y'all hands together real quick. Welcome to the village, right? A little call and response, it is what it is. We're gonna talk about who I am in a little bit, but I need y'all, because I got a lot of nervous energy, so I'm very tactile, I'm hands on when I learn. So real quick, ooh, thank you real quick. Um, follow me, hands together real quick, can I see them? All right, so y'all gonna do what I do, just follow me, right? So we say, We got that out the way, right? Um, so welcome. Um, like I said, like um, get my thank yous. I, it feels go so good to be here. Uh, um, I want to thank the Bezos brother Mike and his wife for having me come back. I actually um, did a challenge in in Denver, the Aspen Institute. Oh, my bread and butter, the opportunity to be here, and of course my wife, my sister, my daughter, my son. They're actually here in the audience. But ha, huh, it is what it is. It is what it is. So I'm a, um, I actually want y'all to listen and engage with me for a second. So I'm going to be everywhere. But before I move forward, I need your hands one more time. We're going to clap and say one, two, right? So clap. <laughs> clap. Hold it. Hold it on your heart. Feel the love. Feel your heart beating. So that's something that we do across this nation. It's called one heartbeat. So when I say one heartbeat, one heartbeat. One heartbeat. All right, thank you. So rock with me, y'all. Rock with me real quick. Listen. I'm sure you all probably noticed. Listen, cut me up a little bit, Tom and Alex, please. This song, please, listen. Ah. Listen, if you know a saint, pray that I don't. Ah, there's a possibility you look different at me. Ah, ever since that day I spoke your name. You been in my life? Ah, fade me out, fade me out right there, right? So I want to kind of, when growing up, right, thank you. Growing up, this was a taboo word. This was a taboo word. You wasn't allowed to say love. I really didn't get it too much, but when it was all said and done, um, I'm from the city of brotherly love, right? I originally went to Heston Elementary, Parkside, West Philadelphia, and what happened was I used to live in Winfield. So Winfield, Winfield, Hey, hey, I see you. From Winfield to Hessen was 1.2 miles every day, going to school and coming back every day. I took this journey, fourth grade, right? So let's take it to fourth grade. So in fourth grade, I was a little different. I told you I was different. I was different. I was really different. You know, I came to school with my cousins. I was the only guy at this particular time. My sister was still going to Ivy League school out Germantown. So it was like I came there, I looked different, I acted different, and I was different. So we got into this little argument with one of the brothers back then. He was a young boy, right? We talking. You know how you start cutting. He said one too many things, and I really wasn't like about I didn't like cutting. You talk about me. You say something about my mama. It is what it is. So I threatened, I threatened him. He threatened me. But you know Jamil like a nut. Like, oh, you hit first. He ain't waste no time. So he hit me. I got dazed. I got dazed. I really got dazed. And I woke, and I was trying to, trying, to, trying to find out where he was. But he was already gone. It died down. You already know I felt like Chris Tucker. Remember in Friday, you got knocked out? Yeah. <laughs> so it is, what, it is what it is. We moving forward because I, I see my time. Thank you. Um, so long story short, we moving forward. Um, my fourth grade year was a hard year because it was the beginning of the divorce. And when it was all said and done, I, um, my first marking period, I had all Fs. Fourth grade, it was a new school. Fourth grade, I had all Fs. And then, you know, and for me, a form of discipline, the person who disciplined me came to my school. I got beat with a two by four in front of the school. You know, children and services was called, whatever the case may be. But that same brother that sucker punched me, actually, I gave him permission to hit me first. I just thought I was going to be able to come back, but he knocked me out. He stunned me a little bit. 
same brother came up, we started bonding. Like, yo, my mom, my dad, they fight all the time. Da -da 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 -da. Domestic violence within the household. So we started connecting. Fourth grade year went by. Summertime, we went to Kelly's pool together. You know, you already know. We went to Kelly's pool together. I would meet up, we would connect, whatever the case may be. Fifth grade, come, fifth grade came along, and we really started understanding and just kind of loving each other, man. Like, you know what I mean? He was considered the bully, but on the flip side, he felt so compassionate about me that took the time, like, yo, let's bust it up. We're going to make this thing work. You from Winfield, you bunch of Now my sister was here. Mind you, I fell in love with school my first, second, and third grade years. Ivy League school was a magnet school, Germantown Avenue, Dr. Green, Green. You talking about education, culture, the arts. It was all love. So when that was over with, when I went to public school in fourth grade, like I was different. I was different. But it's okay. We live and we learn. So it is what it is. This is I, 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 I cannot be myself. I'm coming down. I, um, so it is what it is. We live and we learn. We start bonding, making it work. So then by then, next thing you know, it's middle school. So middle school, I went to Bieber, I went to Bieber Middle School. Bieber Middle School was also out west. When it was all said and done, um, I really liked this family in a way where they have, they have this, this, this thing that they say at the Institute, Ask for Form for Community Solution, where you have family by choice. Family by choice in a way where through the sixth and through the eighth grade was hard for me. Like my mother, my, my biological mother, my father, they was like literally, it was ugly. The court system, I remember going to the human services, like it was ugly. Went through the whole domestic violence with the people that we live with. It was ugly. But at this particular school, I remember Miss Dolores, an Italian and a Hispanic that who was so proud of her culture, made everybody else come to the school and do show and tell. Show and tell, we in middle school. What's show and tell? But something about yourself. Something about yourself. So with this, I want to pause for a second. I need you to get your pen and a piece of paper real quick. Pen and a piece of paper real quick. Write down one thing you like about yourself, one thing you like or you love, just one thing, one thing, whether it be a characteristic about yourself, whether it be something visually others can see, right? Take that one thing. Take that one thing. We riding and we rolling because I got about, whoop, all right? My time is running fast. So I need you to do this real quick. Look into somebody to the left and to your right and tell them what it is and why. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Time is money. Time is money. Time is money. Time is money. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Here we go, you ready? One heartbeat. One heartbeat. So here, in this particular school, whether it be Ms. Dolores, whether it was Mr. Morlitz, who was a Jew that kind of, he kind of started talking to me about the Holocaust and slavery, right? Educate me. I had a brother, Mr. Jacobs, who was actually my track coach that saw something in me like, you need to do something. I wasn't fast enough for the sprints, but let's try to cross country. <laughs> Get that stamina right. And then Mr. Mr. Campbell, who was my music teacher that would let me play the drums from dusk till dawn. Didn't even want to go home. But that love, that brotherly love and sisterly affection. So I'm going to go back to the show and tell in a way where Ms. Dolores, I'll never forget it. One of the sisters was going, um, salam alaikum, her name was Shahada. Her name was Shahada. And um, she was actually talking about her, she was talking about her culture. She was talking about her culture as far as her being a Muslim and how she was going through this rites of passage. And we really just started understanding who she was and what this culture was about. And that right there, family by choice, like it was love. Sixth through seventh and eighth grade, it wasn't matter from where you was from, whether you be from west, north, and south, it made it work, right? So let's, forward, let's fast forward a little bit. All right, here we go. Then, you know what that is? Come on. So then I went to Ben Franklin. Yes, I love you. Ben Franklin in the building, right? So because I, was, I wasn't fast, but I, was, I had some stamina. I didn't mind doing the cross country. Um, I got accepted to this fitness program. 
during the fitness program, when it was all said and done, we was at the ba we were in the basement, the basement dwellers. We had a, um, another whole other aspect where the old heads was upstairs. Some of the programs was upstairs, and we was in the basement. Long story short, it was a fight. Another fight went on, but this time I knew better. I'm not taking the first hit. But it was more so amongst the school itself. I'm telling you, we hit the news and everything. But out of all the ninth graders, I don't know. I used to tell people all the time, I tell my wife this, and my sister knows she here, you could check me on it. Like, I didn't mind getting knocked out. But if you hit first, you better knock me out, because I'm going to go crazy, right? Which is, which is, which is insane. Insane. Because now people, they just shooting. So when it was all said and done, I'm the only ninth grader knuckling it up, right? So what happened was the old heads, they embraced me. You talk about brotherly love. Long story short, I tell people all the time, the first people that really showed me how to love and put some money and something tangible in my pocket was the hustlers. Sad but true. Sad but true. So when it was all said and done, oh, you can hang with the best of them, I'm going to put a pack in your hand, which is now I'm not glorifying selling drugs. But this was a mean for me to make money and my means to kind of sustain myself. So long story short, I got caught up in the juvenile justice system, ugly, because it is what it is for every, <laughs> there's a reaction to every action, right? Then from there, boom, I messed up in Benjamin Franklin, so I went to Overbrook. Overbrook, we back out west with it. We back out west. I'm going from city to city, coast to coast, right? And I'm still in Philadelphia, so in Overbrook, a whole nother dynamic. You out north, you banging with the best of them. You go out west, it's a bunch of pretty boys out west. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. I was born and raised. It is what it is. So it was a different culture, but at the same time, I'll never forget, and I'm going to kind of hone in on this sisterly affection. I'll never forget this one sister that really knew me, because I had a brother, a mentor of mine that I used to play the drums with, and I would kind of travel with his music group, Ernie Saunders. He sung. And I would travel and play the drums. I'll never forget this one sister, Tanya. She was like, man, why are you always fighting and hustling? Didn't I just see you playing the drums in church? Like, what's your problem? What's your issue? By then, I was gone a little bit. I ain't going to say on the front. I was gone. But at the same time, she planted that seed, that act of kindness in a way where, like, taking time to sit down and, like, look, you need to get yourself together. Get yourself together. Speak peace, prayer, love. And then from there, I got introduced to the Youth Build AmeriCorps program. Through the juvenile justice system, um, I did wind up doing some community service. Got placed in York, PA, where I currently reside now, and it's my home, right? So long story short, Youth Build AmeriCorps is a holistic approach in a way where um, civic engagement, leadership development, and service as a core. Service was my core. I began to serve um, to keep myself busy. I've always been nice with the hands, so why not take these hands and protect and serve? So I started learning about myself during my high school, and this is a pivotal moment in you all's life because I want you all, that thing that you know about yourself and you love about yourself, that's what you give. That's your act of kindness. This is how you speak peace and spread love through all the hell that's going on, right? So let's keep it moving because my time is slowly but surely. And here we go. Because when I went to Youth Bill, I went through the program Juvenile Justice 2002. From 2002 to 2013, I'm talking about direct service all day, every day. So it's crazy. The things, the pain that I went through became a passion as far as me serving the community. That domestic violence, 
that domestic violence that I went through, like when it was all said and done, I became conscious and became aware of what's going on. That 2004 KKK rally that happened when I was there, and I'm like, look, I'm from Philadelphia. How was a KK rally going on? We had a unity march. Love. The things that my low-income brothers and sisters that was going through, and I was actually trying to struggle from house to house. Hey, hey, I didn't know, I didn't know it was still going. Let's pause it, because I got to wrap it up real quick, right? Right? I'm, I'm going to pause it. Thank you, um, Tom and Alex. I appreciate it, right? Right? That, that the things as far as not having a family to sit with at the Thanksgiving table that I served in York City, let's have a Thanksgiving Food for the soul, break bread, right? So those things, those acts of kindness, those ways to kind of share your love, be the solution. You are the solution, and I appreciate the fact where I am now, me taking the opportunity to kind of take a step back at Aspen Institute and be more intentional about my service. Now, love is how I serve, but peep game. As I married my wife, she told me with her two kids, like, look, there's nothing you can't do for me that I can't do my, for myself. Baby, I just want to love you and serve you. Let me love you, right? <laughs> right? That's all I wanted to do. So as a way of me accepting her and our children, my daughter. My parents didn't come to see me on the track field. They didn't come to see me on drama. My son, you talking about an active and par parent? The generational curse stops here. It stops here as an act of love. So it's crazy because I love them. But they teach me. My son, he needed a t-ball coach. I didn't know nothing about baseball. Nothing. But you know what? I'm going to learn and I'm going to support my son. My daughter, I'm surprised she ain't get up here and dad. You talking about a dancer? She's shy because it's a new crowd. But she teaches me, baby. Juju on the beat. Put me on. We learn. Through those acts of kindness, do you spread and love? Love actually is a reciprocal thing. You get it back, the most magnetic force in this universe, right? <sighs> Gotta do the hometown favor. Read it. Read it. Through all time. Okay, silently. <laughs> Once you read it, I need you to stand up real quick. If you read it, stand up. If you read it, I need you to stand up. All right, real quick. I told you I'm very interactive, and I need you to do this. What, what are we doing? Ooh. Them haters on my body, shake them off, right? Come on, have a seat real quick, right? Shake them off. Shake them off. Right? I need one more thing from you, and I'm going to my last slide. Your pen, that same pen and paper on that same paper, I need you to write this down for me. R, rock with me. R, E, V, O, L, U, T, yep. <laughs> All right. So I need you now, oh, revolution, finish it. I thought somebody said I don't oh, there it is, right? But peep this, but peep this, right? I need you to look at that second letter and the fifth letter. Take the fifth letter and spell backwards. What is it? At the risk of seeming ridiculous, at the risk of seeming ridiculous, I can make a fool of myself because I know who I am. May me, let me say that the true revolutionary, and that's why I was giving much love to Brother D, D. Ray, because we do work. I almost feel like Black Lives Matter is the Malcolm X spirit. Shout out to Black History. And the OIU, OIU is the peace and love Dr. King theory in a way where you need both. You need the revolutionaries, but we all got it in love. He took that six-hour drive because it was something that he was compassionate about and he loved. I'm here before you today because it's something that I love. And even going across this country with Sister Kim from Philadelphia Youth Network, working representing Philadelphia, with my sister, my biological sister, who we both kind of went through this experience together, her as a single mother, stand with me and my niece and my nephew. When it's all said and done, be different. Love yourself. 
Love yours. Te quiero mucho. Thank you. We, oh, they're going to ask you questions. I was like, you can't go. We're going to do three questions. Three really great questions. Thank you, Sister McCoy. Absolutely. Thank you, love. Words of inspiration would you give to them? Can you repeat the question because your Ooh, microphone just turned good. on? Oh, um, well. Give me a name, sis. Uh, my name is Dominique. Okay. Oh my God. Um, so when, uh, when you meet people that go through domestic violence, um, besides like push through and the things that everybody else says, what is, what are some words of inspiration? that you can give to those people who go through the domestic violence? So thank you, Sister Dominique. Um, knowing who you are, knowing who you are, right? And half of the time, I, I know um, Brother JT, he said, you know, uh, um, you know, as far as he was saying how, you know, you know, things, you know, conquers evil, love conquers all to me. So if you love yourself, and know who you are and what you're worth. And that's a whole nother process because I just kind of came to this self-care process and me appreciating who I am. So while you all in high, high schools, those people like the teachers, like the coaches within yourself that need to talk to, because trauma, trauma is real in the black community. And it's a taboo word just like love was. And I'm feeling you right now. So when it's all said and done, talk to somebody. You have to talk to somebody, and hopefully it's someone that you can trust and that will listen, because just like I was going through that divorce, Mr. Morlitz, the Jew, Mr. Loris, the Italian and American, you see what I'm saying? Like the brother Jacobs, like I remember them vividly because they was my light and my love when I was going back home to hell. <sighs> Thank you, Don. Anybody else? Yes, brother, in the back. Who is that? I can't. Oh, wait, over there to the left. First. It's real reflective right here. Left. To the left, to the left. All right. Um, I'll come back. My bad. My name is uh, Khadija. Hi, Khadija. Um, I wanted to know, when you, when you was talking about when you were, like, uh, like in the, like, with the, the drug dealers and stuff, and you had gotten to the juvenile system, like, was it, like, while you were in there, like, was it hard, and, like, was it, like, a wake-up call for you? Yeah. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard and it was challenging enough that that's why I do juvenile justice to this day. Like literally, I hated the fact that I would talk to my case planner during youth bill, talk to my PO office at 1801 on Vine, and I would get in trouble because I missed the meeting because they didn't talk. So the system itself, that's why I still do juvenile justice with the OJJGP to this day. But when it came to the block, they embraced that because I didn't snitch. So I was feeling the love in a way, like, I'm going to stay in this lane. But eventually, I had to become conscious that I ain't going to sit in front. My wake-up call was that KKK rally. I ain't going to sit here and lie. Like, I'm like, oh, my God. And this is, mind you, this is back in 2003. I was fresh on the scene from Philadelphia. And I'm like, how is this happening? So it was a challenge, just like you all are challenged, just like we challenge every day. But we move forward, and we create opportunities for others. You feel me? Thank you, love. Is that cool? Right. Last question. All right, my name is Sianna Steen. I'm gonna come to you after this because I keep seeing you stand up, but I, we only got a little bit of time. Yes, come on. My name is Sianna Steen. I want to know. Celestine. Steen. Steen. No, my. <laughs> Your name. I'm sorry. My name is Sianna. Okay, Tiana. I apologize. All right. <laughs> if you, if both of your parents in your life, do you think your life would be different? Like if they stayed together? That's, uh, Lord, so you're about to, um, I don't know. I don't, I, to be honest, I don't know, but I can tell you this. The best thing that happened to me is when my dad remarried. My mom, I tell people all the time, and I hate calling her my stepmom. She loved the hell out of me. 
Like, it literally, when I was in the streets, my biological mother was going through her thing, my dad was doing, he was, um, he had relapsed, so he was having some demons that he needed to take care of. But um, my bio, and oh, thank you, God. My mom, my mom was supposed to be 60. She died of lupus. She was supposed to be 60 February the 7th. So it wasn't about a biological thing. Like, this woman loved the hell out of me. And just her keeping me focused and exposing me. That's why my daughter is here to this day. She was the person that took me down to the Merriam Theater. She exposed me because I was used to the hood life, and that's what I knew. So when my dad, it was a blessing. So when my dad remarried, it was like, wow. And even when he relapsed, it was so love. I'm like, yo, she didn't kick me and my sister out. She's like, no, y'all my kids. So... It is what it is. Mom, I love you. I know she's watching down, but hey, I don't have any regrets because they had two lives to live. They had to take care of themselves. That's why I said, love yourself first. Figure out who you are. All right? Much love, Tiana. Oh. Let's give our speaker a big round of applause.